So I was on a date with a girl the other day. I know, everyone thinks I'm gay. To be clear, I'm not gay. I'm bi, bisexual, lucky me. And I was on a date with a girl, and turns out, right, she used to be a lesbian, which is great because... So did I. <laughs> I should probably explain, I'm trans. When we say trans, we mean transgender, not transport, obviously. <laughs> Some folks might say I was a man trapped inside a woman's body. I don't really identify with that. It's a bit old school. Although, if you think about it, we were all once trapped inside a woman's body. <laughs> well, actually, not all people who give birth are women. That was the test and you all failed. <laughs> so disappointing. <laughs> Someone once told me when I first started stand-up that it was really important to define myself really clearly straight away so that the audience was open to listening to me. Apparently all this, it can be distracting from the comedy. <laughs> but defining yourself is pretty hard when you're an Indian-American, kind of Australian person in Britain who's a trans-masculine, non-binary, bisexual, polyamorous, dyslexic performance artist. <laughs> And there's nothing more confusing than performance art. <laughs> and because I am a performance artist, I came at stand-up from a very theoretical place. I did a lot of research. And I realized that stand-up is often very pared back, just a person with a mic, set list, stool, bottle of water. <laughs> Whereas performance art can be anything at all. The intention with comedy is for the audience to laugh. The intention with performance art is for the audience to never laugh ever again. <laughs> Stand up, it's a bit like polyamory, right? There are rules, everyone knows what's going on. Performance art is a bit more like monogamy. It's well respected, it can be satisfying, but you spend the whole time thinking, when is this going to end? <laughs> Only time will tell. Will this be a stand-up show? Will it be a performance art show? <laughs>